Welcome to the West Virginia Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admission Officers Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us today. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so our panelists cannot see or hear you today. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so please be sure to sign up for additional sessions. And finally, this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at the same website where you registered. Without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to our presenters. And today we're going to start with Bridge Valley Community and Technical College. Hello everyone, let me share my screen really quickly. All right, so my name is Hannah. I'm an admissions counselor for Bridge Valley Community and Technical College. We are a two-year institute. Um, just to go over some Bridge Valley 101 facts, we have two campuses. One of them is located in Montgomery, West Virginia, and the other is located in South Charleston, West Virginia. We are accredited by the North Central Association of the Higher Learning Commission, and we offer over 80 degree and certificate programs in high demand career which includes us working in collaboration with Workforce West Virginia. So some of our shortest programs are 12 to 16 weeks, which includes our utility line service program. Um, we do offer degrees in a variety of areas. We typically have something to suit everyone. Those include business and legal studies, general studies, general education, healthcare studies, and technology and engineering. Um, now, just to go over the cost of attendance right up front, our average um, dollar amount per credit hour is $188. So you're looking at an average of $4,502 per year for tuition if you're attending full time, which usually means 12 credit hours or four classes, depending on the credit hours of the class. Some programs do have special fees, such as our health studies programs. When you apply to those separately, you will have to pay additional fees whenever you start the program. So I'm not going to go through and list all of our programs at Bridge Valley because, like I said, we have over 80 and I don't want to overwhelm or bore anyone, but just to go over a few of them. As far as our business and legal studies programs go, we do offer a variety of accounting, healthcare management, medical coding, entrepreneurship. We just started up a culinary arts program again, and we just recently started a hospitality program on our Montgomery campus. Our diesel technology and our welding technology programs are listed under our business and legal studies um, division, and those two programs are located in Montgomery as well. So with our general education, we do offer an associate of arts, and then we also offer a certificate of science, which would be one year or an associate of science. Our health studies programs are some of our most popular programs and we do offer a variety of them. Our dental hygiene program is located in Montgomery along with our medical assisting program. And then the majority of our healthcare programs are located in South Charleston, such as diagnostic medical sonography, um, MLT, the medical laboratory technology program, our RN nursing program. And we have two um, respiratory therapy and veterinary technology programs that are in collaboration with Carver Career Center. So that the way that those work is that you would take your main general education classes with us, and then you would do those program specific classes at Carver. Um, so some of our health studies programs do have selective admission and also our um, one of our technology programs. So this is the list of the programs that have that selective admission. And what that means essentially is that you will apply to Bridge Valley as a student on our website, but then you also have a separate application for that specific program that you have to fill out. This is a list of some of our technology and engineering programs, and they include um, three different types of engineering, civil, electrical, mechanical. Um, we had a process technology program, several different computer technology programs, including web design, um, cybersecurity. We do also offer chemical operations and instrumentation measurement and control technology. 
To briefly go over student services, because campus life is incredibly important, we offer a variety of um, assistance to students. We want to make sure that they're able to um, reach their goals at Bridge Valley and receive the help that they may need. We have a freshman advising center for new students, so all new students will be advised by a freshman. Um, you don't have to figure it out by yourself. We have a, an amazing career services program. We have a student success center that offers um, tutoring and um, placement testing. We also offer accessibility services that offer an array of services for students in varying needs. Um, so I, another important thing to add that's not on this list is that we offer a very strong veteran services program. So if you are a veteran, you might want to check us out. Okay, so documents required for full admission. Um, this is pretty simple unless you're doing one of those selective um, programs. So you're going to need to put in your application for admission on our website, which is always free. And you're going to want to send us your final high school transcript after you graduate. That can be sent to us electronically or via mail. And then if you've decided to take any college classes while you're in high school, you'll want to make sure that you send us transcripts from those colleges. We will need those for your full admission. Okay. Um, this is just briefly to go over the FAFSA. Make sure that you fill that out. The deadline for that is coming up. Um, priority is pretty important. So um, we also have a scholarship application. It's bridgevalley.awardspring.com. So check that out. Make sure to fill out all of the scholarship applications on there. And currently our classes are online due to COVID-19. Um, a lot of students have asked me what the outcome will be for the fall semester. And we're honestly not sure we're taking it day by day. We are hoping to be back on campus and to be able to interact with everyone and have that in-person learning, but we're not sure yet. So please um, check our website and stay updated with that. And then just for a quick reminder, um, you can visit our website at www.bridgevalley.edu and click apply now to apply. Um, and we do now offer a virtual tour. So if you wanna check out the building and since we're um, working from home right now and you can't come in, you can visit www.westvirginiawvcollegeroadtrip.com. All right, and I think that's my time. Thank you all so much. Great, thank you so much Bridge Valley Community and Technical College. We're going to move now on to Savannah College of Art and Design. Hey everyone, how are you doing today, tonight? Uh, thanks for having me, I appreciate it. My name is Dan Willett. I'm the Assistant Director of Admission for the Savannah College of Art and Design. Um, Savannah College of Art and Design is a school for artists, for designers, for creative thinkers, for people that wanna follow their passion. So if that's you guys, um, thanks for joining. I'm happy to tell you all about the opportunities available today. Um, the first thing I wanna talk about is just a little bit of the history of the school. We're only about 41 years old as a school, so that's relatively young. This was our first building. Uh, it's a pretty cool story. Paula Wallace, the president who founded it, is still the president, was an art teacher, got sick of public school, decided to start a school in her own image, and it had about 10 teachers and 70 students to start. And in those 40 years, we've grown quite a bit. We've got about 15,000 students now, so we're a medium-sized school. All 50 states represented and a large international population. I think there's about 28 or 30 percent this year of international students. So for you artists, you're gonna be surrounding yourself not only with a bunch of artists, but from people all over the world to make some great connections um, for when you leave school. One of the best parts in my opinion is when you apply, you're not applying just to Savannah, Georgia campus or to a certain campus. You apply as a student, you get accepted as a student. And when you come, you get to tell us where you wanna go. So we have, you can see the top left there is the Atlanta campus. It's about 3000 students in Atlanta, a big city, small campus, amazing opportunities there. Uh, stuff like Marvel Comics Universe, Walking Dead, Stranger Things, Gucci, Prada, Activision, Rick and Morty's like Starburn Studios and Gravity Falls, tons of cool stuff for artists. Um, bottom left, Savannah College of Art and Design. That's our biggest and our namesake. There's about 10,000 students here, 88 SCAD buildings throughout Savannah. So kind of the opposite, small city, big campus. And then the top right is really cool. This is our study abroad. This is the French campus. So if you guys wanna go study in France, you're more than welcome to do that. We send about 100 students every 10 weeks. So please, if you do come to SCAD, don't miss that opportunity. It's incredible. And then the bottom right, e-learning. Anywhere you want to go where you have an internet address, whether that's home or the beach or somewhere overseas, wherever you feel like studying, you can do that. We offer more programs of art and design than any other art school in the US. You can see here, this is 40 of our majors. We have 115 programs. 
but these are like the 40 top programs that we, we students will major in. A lot of variety here, everything from visual arts to engineering and architecture to graphics and sequential art to graphic design, fashion, VR and augmented reality, film and television, uh, sculpture. I mean, anything that you do as an artist, there's a path forward for you at SCAD. We wanna make sure that you guys you know, are really finding success in those fields and being pioneers. And so our alumni employment rate really does show our success. We've, for the last three years in a row, had a 99% employment rate. So we asked students, are you working or are you back in school after graduation? 99% said yes, 91% of those are in that field. So I studied fashion, now I'm working in the fashion field somewhere. This really shows two things for SCAD. One is we are helping those students fill up that toolbox with the skill sets, the programs necessary, the mindsets to be successful in your field, but also giving you the connections to actually get in and open the doors in those fields because it's great to be an artist, but if you can't support yourself, we're not succeeding as a school. So those two things have been going really well for us um, and for students when they're graduating. Uh, we are gonna ask you guys to do an internship, but SCAD has a really unique program called the uh, SCAD Pro, which is our in-house internship where companies like Google and Facebook and Lenovo and Chick-fil-A and NFL, they'll come and say, we know that you guys have a huge school full of design thinkers. We want their help, we want their solutions. Um, and those students get to go on and work with real world companies and put that on their resume that, hey, I worked for two weeks with a Google project and here's what it is, which is pretty cool. Um, all of the equipment and materials are included with SCAD. Once you start your tuition payments or once you pay tuition, you don't have any more like materials fees or computer fees. You can use anything you want, green screens, computers, motion capture suits, render farm for animators, uh, fashion has fabrics and thread and sewing machines, all kinds of awesome stuff for you guys. We do have athletics too, some unique sports, uh, swimming, bowling, there's equestrian for horseback riders. We have an esports team. Anybody here is a big gamer. League of Legends or Overwatch. We have two collegiate teams that you can play if you want to join us. Um, and 11th and 12th graders, you guys can join us for summer programs, SCAD Summer Seminar or Rising Star. I'm happy to kind of expand on that if someone's interested. I'll make sure my contact information is here. But for you guys uh, who are willing or, or wanting to apply, 11th and 12th graders, today we have a fee waiver code. If you are interested, typically it's $60 to apply. This code's good for about a week. So any artists, designers, creatives in the room here today, please don't hesitate to reach out uh, or go ahead and apply if that's something you're interested in. Appreciate your time, guys, and I'm happy to answer any questions at the end of this. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that, Savannah College of Art and Design. We are now going to move to West Virginia Wesleyan College. Hi everybody, my name is Leah Ripley. I am the Associate Director of Admissions at West Virginia Wesleyan College and I want to share a bit with you about the college today. We're located in Buckhannon, West Virginia, right in the center of the state. So we're very centrally located to um, those, those surrounding areas. And we are in a small town of Buckingham, West Virginia. We're a small, quaint, um, private institution with a lot of downtown culture, restaurants, and plenty of things to do for our students, um, despite our small town feel. One of our uh, most noted recognitions here lately is that we have a 90, 91% of our students are reporting being employed or in graduate school within six months upon graduation in their field of study, of course, which is incredibly um, important and noteworthy as well. Here you'll see in the last uh, 10 or so years, a list of all of the renovations and new campus updates and new buildings, um, athletic complexes, performing arts buildings that have been added to our campus. So we're constantly updating um, and keeping things new and fresh for our students, which includes a multi-million dollar renovation to our library just last summer, which now has 24 seven access for our students. We have approximately uh, just over a thousand students on campus. We have a pretty decent 50-50 split of male and females. And noteworthy here, 100% of our classes are taught by professors. The majority of your classes at Wesleyan are gonna be split between your general studies, your major and electives to allow you the ability to double major or add a minor. And with that, 
excuse me, also the ability for you to consider study abroad programs as well. We do have a learning center um, on campus, which is for any student with diagnosed learning disabilities. It is a free service that is there to support you. And in addition, we offer free tutoring to all of our students um, at Wesleyan with a variety of different walk-in programs, testing facilities and such. We provide our students with all the entire Microsoft Office suite throughout the four years of your time in college for you to download onto your laptops. And we do have a partnership with Dell, allowing our students to be able to purchase laptops if, if they wish um, at a discounted price. We are a mostly residential campus with 85 to 90% of our students living on campus. And we have a wide variety of options for them to choose from, from more premium um, style housing, standard housing, double single apartment suites, um, on campus and off campus houses as well. The vast majority of our students you will find are not just students, they participate in something else. So a lot of co-curricular opportunities for our students to participate in, such as community service, athletics, a lot of student organizations, there's over 70 of them, the arts, Greek life, and religious life. Community service is a big part of who we are and what we do. We do offer a $2,000 a year scholarship for anyone who participates in community service. So if you're a high school senior, this is a great opportunity for you to consider as those awards are being um, awarded right now as we speak. We're division two within the NCAA, so we do have the potential to scholarship our athletes. And here you'll see a list of the 22 uh, different sports teams, men and women's that we do offer. There's plenty happening on campus all of the time um, for our Bobcat Entertainment is our student organization which plans all of the activities happening on campus and you'll see a list of those um, on the slide here. And in addition, because of our location, outdoor recreation is a big part of who we are and what we do. So weekly under normal circumstances, we typically have a wide variety of outdoor recreation trips for our students to be able to take at a drastically discounted price than if you were to do it yourself. The arts is a massive part of who we are and what we do at Wesleyan. And here you'll see a list of the different arts programs that we do offer. One of the nicest thing about our programs is whether you're majoring in the arts or not, you can audition for scholarship. I mentioned that Greek life is a part of our campus community. We have nine different national organizations. And finally, spiritual life. Um, since we are a private school affiliated with the Methodist Church, there are spiritual life opportunities for our students to get involved in as well. Our application is free and open with no deadline. For any of you that are high school seniors, you should be applying now if you have not already. You can apply through our website, wvwc.edu, or through the Common Application. We are only requiring a high school transcript test optional um, in order to complete your application, review it for acceptance. Again, we have no deadline, so this, however, the sooner the better to submit that application. You'll see here that our current cost um, is $41,828. That is tuition, room, board, and fees. However, the average out-of-pocket cost for our students looks more like $9,000. And finally, I'm going to fly through a few of these here at the very tail end. I do want you to know that we have, um, we are offering campus visits right now, Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. You can sign up for a campus visit through our website. I thank you for your time and I'll, I'll take questions at the end. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, West Virginia Wesleyan College. We appreciate learning more about your campus. And I just want to remind everyone attending today that you can use the Q&A function at any time to submit questions for any of our institutions. At this time, we're going to move on to Shenandoah University. Take it away. All right, thank you so much as I get started here uh, sharing my screen. So uh, my name is Kevin Zimmerman. 
I am the regional admissions representative uh, for the university. Um, I work with all students from the entire state of West Virginia. So as you're navigating the process, whether you're a uh, senior or you know, sophomore, junior or younger, um, I would be your point person as you, um, you know, learn more about uh, Shenandoah and navigate the application and admissions process. So with that, just to get into some you know, general information first, uh, we are based in Winchester, Virginia, uh, which is just a little bit south of uh, Martinsburg um, in the Eastern Panhandle. As you head down I-81, we're about a half hour south of Martinsburg. Um, so very easy to be able to access, especially from the Eastern Panhandle of the state, uh, but certainly uh, you know, a very reasonable trip from many other destinations throughout the state of West Virginia. Um, what we like to think of ourselves, um, you know, at Shenandoah is, you know, the fact that we offer such a diverse experience um, all the while being set in a small setting. So what that means is that, um, you know, great opportunities in the fact that, you know, we offer 80 different academic programs of study, uh, 30 plus minors, um, you know, our average class size is only about 19 students a class, and our total enrollment at the university is about 4,000 students, um, and about 2,100 of those are with us at the undergraduate level. Um, so with that, it's something that, you know, as you're navigating and going through, you know, you're going to get, you know, a lot of experiences that, you know, maybe students would think you'd only are able to experience at a medium or large school, but really with us, you're able to do that in that great small setting. So that's something we really, you know, pride ourselves with um, at Shenandoah. So um, well, I'll tell me what that means is eight different schools and divisions, you know, make up who we are at Shenandoah. So I mentioned the 80 different majors, the 30 plus minors, and those are really spread out across so many different options. Um, whether it's our College of Arts and Sciences, whether it is our School of Business, our School for Education, um, our uh, nursing school, our conservatory for our students who are into the performing arts like music, theater, and dance. And then we also have schools for uh, pharmacy. And then we also have a school of other health professions such as physical therapy, occupational therapy, athletic training, uh, physician assistant, uh, just to name a few. So really a lot of opportunities there. And then we also offer some very unique um, majors and programs. For instance, uh, we have a virtual reality design program and we also have an esports program, not just as a you know, club or team or anything like that, but it's also something that we offer as a major uh, for students to be able to study with us at Shenandoah. So something that we think is pretty unique with us. Uh, but again, you know, really to stress, you know, the size, you know, the experience, you know, really not going to get lost in the shuffle. Our student to faculty ratio only comes in at about 11 to 1. So with that, it's something that our students are going to get a lot of great attention from our faculty as they're going through their time and their experience while with us. And that's going to mean that, you know, as you're trying to, you know, select courses semester by semester, or you're trying to land research opportunities or internship experiences or trying to, you know, look into grad schools and getting a great letter of recommendation. You know, you're going to get all that and then some, you know, with us as you're, you know, navigating the experience and your time with us um, at Shenandoah. So something else that we, um, you know, are able to provide and offer our students is something that we call the Integrated Mobile Learning Technology Program. Uh, what that ultimately means for you is that every one of our students who comes to the university is outfitted with a MacBook Pro, an iPad, and an Apple Pencil. So, you know, especially, you know, navigating, you know, academics over the past year, you know, technology is so significant and so important. Um, but even, you know, times before and the times that will happen after, it's something we want to make sure that we're providing our students all the tools necessary to be able to be successful, you know, inside and outside of the classroom. Um, and we'll make sure that we provide all the technical support for our students, you know, as they are trying to navigate through that as well. But to talk a little bit about what life is like for students on our campus, I'm going to segue into that for the next little bit. Um, so with us, uh, we are called the Hornets, uh, just to give you a little bit of a heads up about who we are at Shenandoah. And, you know, as far as living on campus, dining on campus, and what our students are involved in outside of the classroom, so many different things that our students can find themselves, you know, getting into. Uh, we are a primarily residential campus, you know, a lot of options that are available for our students, you know, not just as far as, you know, coming in as a first year student, but then also great upper class housing options to be able to pick and choose from. As far as dining, uh, we offer five different dining options on our campus. We have our traditional style dining hall, which has a lot of different, uh, different food stations um, and selection to be able to uh, pick from, you know, you know, day after day, you know, meal after meal. Uh, but then we also have a variety of other options, you know, spread out throughout campus as well. 
Um, in addition, uh, we also offer 90 different clubs organizations on campus. So it's something that, you know, if you had something you were really active and involved in in high school, it's very easy to be able to continue to do that uh, when you arrive to campus. But if it's something you want to explore that you hadn't been involved in before, or you know, you know there's something that we don't have that you want to be able to start up, very easy to be able to do that with us as well. Um, as far as athletics, uh, we are a division three institution, so our students are not on athletic scholarship with us. Uh, so we find that it is really a model where our students are able to be you know, students first, athletes second. So with that, 22 varsity teams we have on campus, 11 for the men and 11 for the women. Uh, but also, as I mentioned, uh, we do have an esports team. Uh, you know, we have a cheerleading squad, uh, you know, dance team opportunities. So a lot of different ways in which students you know, can get involved with athletics, uh, whether it be varsity or club intramural sports or you know, a lot of great uh, campus recreation opportunities in addition to that. Something else that is very significant and important to us on our campus is our conservatory and the fact that we put on over 400 performances a year on our campus. So it's something that with music, theater, and dance, a lot of great opportunities for majors in those areas, uh, but also opportunities for students to be able to audition for those areas without um, you know, necessarily being a major or minor in those areas. And then uh, lastly, you know, a lot of ways that we offer support for our students, you know, whether it's mental health, uh, whether it's academic support services, career and professional development. And with our application, uh, our application is one that is test optional. Uh, you would find on the Shenandoah website at su.edu. And with that, um, thank you so much. And I certainly look forward to fielding any questions you might have later on. Have a great day. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Shenandoah University. We'd like hearing more about what you all have to offer. We're going to close out this presentation section now with West Liberty University. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. My name is Kyle Patrick, and I am an admissions counselor at West Liberty University. Um, I chose this picture today just because it's kind of been how we've been feeling for the last few uh, weeks or even months, if you want to say that as well. So just a beautiful shot of our campus there um, on the hilltop up in the northern panhandle. Um, I always love to show this as well, um, just kind of shows off all of everything that we want to highlight um, when we talk to somebody about West Liberty University. Um, two of the things that we're the most proud of. Um, are right there on the top left. So we have been ranked the safest college campus in the state of West Virginia. Um, and we do have the highest four year public, public graduation rate in the state of West Virginia as well. So not only does that speak to the volume of uh, the quality of students that we have on campus, we're getting tremendous students that are coming in with college credit, um, they're, they're high scholar students, but it also just pays tribute to our amazing faculty that we have on our campus. Our professors are great. Um, we've had two, pro two of our professors win West Virginia professor, the professor of the Year over the last five years, um, and they definitely contribute to our graduation rate. And basically all that means is, yes, our students are graduating, but they're graduating on time, and we're even finding that they're graduating early now as well. Uh, we are also a very small school. We have about 2,500 students. Um, and about that of that total enrollment, about 1,800 of that is going to be about undergraduate, and then the other 700 or so is going to be made up of our graduate students on campus. Um, our student to faculty ratio is 15 to 1, uh, so for every 15 full-time students, we have one full-time faculty member, and our average class size is 25 students. Uh, more than 90% of our students do receive some sort of financial aid from the government. Um, and then we do, uh, on our standpoint, do we do give out over $6 million annually in institutional scholarships. And I'll get on those in detail in a little bit more. Uh, we do offer over 70 majors. We have over 50 student clubs and organizations on our campus. Um, just like a lot of the other schools, we are Division II. Um, and we do compete in the Mountain East Conference. And uh, that's kind of our location there. A little map kind of shows you where we are located in like the tri-state area and uh, gets to that here. And then we are also the oldest institution in uh, the state of West Virginia. We're actually older than the state of West Virginia itself. We were founded way back in 1837. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I talked about a little bit of our unique location. So this is kind of where we're at. I know we have mostly, we should have mainly West Virginia students on today. So this kind of gives you an idea of where we are located to some of the other major areas in West Virginia. Uh, so we're in that Northern Panhandle. So we're not kind of that cool spot of the state where we're, we're so close to Ohio, we're so close to Pennsylvania. Uh, we're only an hour from Pittsburgh, only two hours from Columbus. Uh, so it really sets up some huge internship opportunities for our students, especially in, in the business fields, the medical fields. 
uh, to have that in your backyard to be able to make that drive and to get some of those experience in a big city is huge for our students. Uh, we're about an hour from Morgantown, two hours from Parkersburg, um, three hours from Charleston, and uh, about three hours and 45 minutes over to the Eastern Panhandle in Martinsburg area as well. So uh, it, it could be a pretty good drive depending where you are in the state of West Virginia. I mentioned earlier, we do have over 70 undergraduate majors. We're very fortunate to have uh, as many quality programs as we do. Um, some of the colleges that we have on our campus are the College of Arts and Communication. Um, in, this, in this college, you're gonna find some, some very unique programs like broadcasting, digital media design, um, art therapy is one of our new popular ones as well. Uh, moving on to the Gary E. West College of Business. Um, so just your standard business majors here. Um, we also added some new programs recently. Um, marketing has been added. Uh, we have a Zoom management major in that program as well now. Uh, the College of Education and Human Performance. Um, way back when we were founded in 1837, we were founded on the College of Education. So that's kind of our backbone here at West Liberty. Uh, the College of Liberal Arts, our biggest program in there, probably our criminal justice program. Uh, College of Sciences and Health Sciences have just really taken off on our campus. It's probably our most populated um, college on campus, um, all the way from pre-medical, pre-vet to our new um, amazing zoo science program that attracts students from all over the country. Uh, that program has really taken off in the, in the last few years. And uh, Honors College is available also for students who would like to uh, continue um, in that in college. Uh, so I mentioned our scholarships. So we have everything from a thousand dollar scholarship for our freshmen all the way to a full ride Elbin. Um, so for this year for admissions, we are test optional, but we are still, we still need the test score for scholarship consideration. So um, you can kind of see where you land on the chart. Um, we don't need both AC, ACT and AP, we just need one or the other. Um, like some most of the other schools too, our application is 100% free. Um, there's no deadline. We have we operate on rolling admission here at West Liberty University, so we'll take. We actually accept students all the way from a week after. And as I mentioned earlier, we are test optional. Uh, campus activities. We are a campus that relies heavily, heavily on stuff going on on campus. We're kind of in the middle of nowhere, on top of a hill where there's not a shopping mall across the street. So, you know, we have a, a huge list of events going on. There's just a few there on the left side, left side for you to go over. Uh, Topperfest is a huge fun weekend for moving weekend. They get freshmen acclimated, get them out of their dorm rooms, and get them meeting new people as well. Uh, and we are, like I mentioned, we are Division II. Um, we, our nickname is the Hilltoppers, um, up on the hill, because we are literally on top of a hill in West by God, West Virginia. Um, and there's a, just a list of the men's sports and women's sports. They're pretty basic sports. Um, we did just add men's soccer a couple years ago, and then our new women's sport is acrobats and tumbling. Um, and we are open on campus. We are offering three campus tours a day. Um, you're allowed to bring two people, um, obviously wear your mask, social distance. Uh, and we are offering our accepted student days virtually now as well. Um, those are coming up in March. And there's my contact info, um, just kyle.patrick at westliberty.edu. And then please be sure to follow us on social media and interact with us on there. We have students that do takeovers and you can find us at Discover West Lib. Wonderful. Thank you so much, West Liberty University, and thank you to all of our presenters today. We're now going to move into the Q&A portion of today's event. So I'm going to briefly share my screen to show the first question. So our first question today is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we're going to ask each of our experts here this question, and we're going to start in the same order, starting with Bridge Valley Community and Technical College. Thank you. Um, I would say that my biggest piece of advice would be to ask every question that comes to mind. And that's for admissions and also for financial aid. There is no stupid question. Um, and you wanna make sure you're investing um, in whatever school that you're choosing. So make sure that it's the right fit for you and, and make sure you know the ins and outs of it. Great advice, thank you. Savannah College of Art and Design. Yeah, I would say two things. One is start a new email when, when you start applying to schools because you don't wanna fill up your inbox. So, you know, John, John goes to college at gmail.com and send everything there. So you know exactly where to look when you're looking at apps. And uh, the other one is maybe to just make sure you ask if there's a fee waiver code for schools, because a lot of schools do offer that, but they won't tell you unless you ask. So go ahead and say, hey, is, do you have a fee waiver? And it may help you, especially if you're applying to a lot of different schools. 
great tips. Thank you. Uh, West Virginia Wesleyan College. Sure, I would say, especially given the um, circumstances that we understand students are in right now, you need to remember that you are your own best advocate and you need to be proactive. Um, no one's gonna own your education more than you. And if college, higher education is what your next step is, um, use your admissions representatives, that's what, who all of we are at the colleges you're interested in, ask questions as they already said, um, but take initiative, um, ask for help when you need to, but don't be afraid to just kind of take the reins and, and kind of guide yourself along and be proactive. So important, thank you. Uh, Shenandoah University, what's your advice? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, I would know just from, you know, years working uh, within the field and experience and everything like that, I certainly feel like there's a lot of times where you know, working with students and families that, you know, there's maybe been some, you know, trepidation or hesitation as far as looking into private colleges and universities. Um, so I would say that especially, you know, to, you know, Dan's point and even to Hannah's point as far as, you know, being, you know, great about advocating for yourself and, you know, being great, you know, looking for things like application fee waivers and finding ways to, you know, navigate the process. Um, you know, you may think that, you know, the sticker price of a private college, you know, may, you know, be out of your range. But once you, you know, look at all the great scholarship opportunities, you know, whether from the college itself or, you know, from other outside sources, you know, a school that may have seemed like a reach, you know, very well may be, you know, in reach for you or even, you know, a better value as far as, you know, dollars and cents goes. So I would say just, you know, take, you know, the college search process, you know, with an open mind um, and may end up finding, you know, a place that, um, you know, is a great fit that you wouldn't have otherwise thought. Fantastic. Thank you. And we'll close this question out with West Liberty University. Thank you. Yeah, I, same thing as uh, everybody has said so far. I just think it's, you know, I tell everybody I meet with, you know, this is going to be pretty much for the most part four years of where you're, you're supposed to live for, or take that next step to your career, what you're going to do in your future. And it's all about you. And you can have your family members, whoever it may be, you know, weigh in and try to convince you to go wherever you want to go. But ultimately, it's going to be up to you. And it's your decision. And um, it's where you see yourself living for four years, where you see yourself comfortable. And I always, you know, I think you should be really aggressive in the college search, get out of your comfort zone. And if you I always thought like there's no way I could go to a big school, go to a big school and make sure that that is true because you never know um, what you might find on that campus. And it's important to know that what, what's all around you and you don't have to do the stereotypical thing that every student in your high school is doing or everybody in your family is doing. You can step out of that comfort zone and, and be a little aggressive and uh, find your home. Great, well, thank you all so much for sharing your expertise on that topic. Our next question is going to help us get to know a little bit more about your campuses. So the question is, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? And we're going to start back at the top with Bridge Valley Community and Technical College. Um, so since we don't have any actual sporting events, um, I think one of my favorite events is um, it's actually, we work with our veteran services to spend a day um, honoring 9-11 and all of the veterans that were deployed and that we lost during that event. Um, we have a dinner that's catered for any of our um, students that are family members of a veteran or our veterans themselves. And we also work to write throughout the campus, we all write letters to send out to those that are deployed. So it feels like a, it's a great community builder and it's also um, very sentimental and important I think to honor those. Yeah very nice thank you for sharing. Savannah College of Art and Design what's your favorite? Uh, tough to pick one we have events kind of all year round for the school so we'll have a fashion show every year for the school of fashion we have um, Atlanta Television Fest and a movie for the largest movie festival in the country we have Game Fest we have Animation Fest so all of these schools have releases um, my problem, my favorite was probably the game design festival, just because I like the game. So to go in there and like try student games out and give them feedback, um, it was really cool to see some of the stuff they were working on. Sounds great. Thank you. At West Virginia Wesleyan College. Sure. If you ask any current student at West Virginia Wesleyan or any alumni of West Virginia Wesleyan what the best part of their college experience has been or, or was, they're going to tell you it's Big Bingo, 
which sounds funny. However, it's um, a campus activity that usually happens once or twice a year. Um, and it is what it sounds like. It is a big bingo event. Um, it has now had to move into our dining hall on campus because practically the entire campus community comes to it. Um, obviously, it looks a little bit different this year. They had to do it virtually, but the prizes are insane. They give out um, gaming systems, iPads, they've given away trips, um, all sorts of things. So yeah, that's definitely one of our most unique and um, most talked about traditions on campus. That's wonderful. Thanks for telling us about that. Shenandoah University? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, Winchester, Virginia, uh, where we are located, uh, we are the self-proclaimed uh, Apple capital of the world. Uh, so something we, um, you know, really enjoy and really run with, um, you know, in the community, but something that we work with, you know, on the university campus and within our community is something that we call the Apple Blossom Festival. So it's held typically at the end of April, early May, every single year in Winchester, Virginia. And, you know, for all intents and purposes, the town, you know, just everything shuts down and everything is committed to the festival. So, you know, it's parades, it's carnivals, it's, um, you know, just, you know, great food stands and everything like that. And, you know, our students are actually given um, the day off uh, heading into the Friday, you know, of the festival. You know, our campus is closed. So no students in classes, you know, no faculty, no staff teaching, working, you know, we go all in on this. Um, you know, the colors of the festival are pink and green. So everyone is decked out in pink and green and really just, um, you know, it's a great way for the college and the community to come together. So that is something that I'm you know, really happy that we have and, you know, just brings great pride into our, um, you know, institution and uh, just the community on the whole. Sounds fantastic. Thanks for telling us about that self-proclaimed title that y'all have too. Uh, West Liberty University, we'll let you close this out for us. All right, thank you. Um, West Liberty has so many unique traditions and being where we're at, we have to rely on these traditions, but I'm gonna go the easiest choice and have to say homecoming. Um, it's just such a special event on our campus and I, I can't really explain it. Um, from being a, a former student there for four years and being the, a current alumni as well, it's just, it's a different experience for everybody, but it's really something that the school does an amazing job to make sure everybody's involved. And it's literally becoming a two week event now and it's, uh, it's just awesome. And uh, I feel like every year we get blessed with the most perfect weather and uh, the football team always tries to do the best to schedule a team that they hopefully can beat. So there's usually a decent football game going on too, but uh, it's just an incredible week and an incredible event that uh, all alumni and current students can get involved with. Sounds fantastic. Thank you so much to all of you for helping us learn a little bit more about your campuses. We have one final question here today, and it's also going to help us get to know who you all are uh, as institutions. And that is give an interesting or fun fact about your school. And of course, we'll keep with tradition and go ahead and head to Hannah. All right, so um, one of my favorite things and that I think is a fun fact is that we actually have a makerspace available called The Grid. Um, so students and faculty and staff can all go in and use the space to um, whatever liking they want. We offer the ability to make your own podcast, to do 3D printing, to work in pottery. And we offer a lot of workshops and classes too. So if you wanna learn those skills, you can do that at the grid. Sounds wonderful. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Savannah College of Art and Design. Um, I just realized I forgot to tell you guys about the event. Um, we have the largest celebration of St. Patrick's Day in the U.S. or maybe in the world in Savannah. So that's one of the cool events that we have in St. Patrick's Day. Uh, the school actually shuts down for that. I just wanted to touch on that. Um, but something fun, I, I guess I could touch on two recent successes from our alumni. Uh, Christopher John Rogers, who is a fashion student, recently graduated, designed Kamala Harris's purple dress for the inauguration, which was pretty cool. Um, and then the two lead Pixar animators, actually that did Zootopia, Moana, and Big Hero 6. Um, they met as roommates freshman year in SCED. Those are all definitely interesting facts. Thanks for sharing those with us. West Virginia Wesleyan College. Sure, so we have an alumni um, who years ago when he passed away, he actually um, donated to the college of what is now considered the third largest collection of um, original artifacts from Abraham Lincoln and all of those live in a space on the upper floor of our library where obviously students um, take part in some of that but also just for um, for people to be able to see as well. 
Fascinating. Thank you so much for telling us about that. Shenandoah University, what's your interesting or fun fact? So, um, you know, just to kind of, you know, go with current events, um, I actually just learned a little bit earlier today, um, you know, as I mentioned during the presentation, uh, we do have a pharmacy school. So, you know, a lot of, you know, dedication and commitment to the health sciences at Shenandoah University. So um, our campus has actually been serving as a mass vaccination site over the course of the past few weeks. And um, yesterday, we actually, you know, exceeded 25,000 uh, shots administered on our campus. Uh, so it's something that, you know, we've really, you know, loved being a part of, you know, being on the front lines as far as trying to, um, you know, fight COVID and, you know, just be a great partner within our area. So, you know, that is something, um, you know, that we are really proud of, um, you know, you know, that we've uh, been able to accomplish um, and just an interesting factoid uh, about us, uh, especially in, you know, light of uh, current events. Absolutely. That's incredible. And congratulations to your to your students there as well. West Liberty University, what was an interesting or fun fact about your campus? Definitely tough, definitely tough to top that one for sure. That's awesome. Congratulations, Kevin. Um, you know, the, the biggest one I always lean on is that we're just the oldest institution in the state. Um, 1837, we were founded. And one of the coolest things, if you actually come on campus, we have a bunch of pictures of students that used to take horse horseback rides up to the campus on the dirt road. It's just fascinating. Um, another uh, famous people that went there, uh, we did have Brad Paisley attended our school. Um, and I always like to give the fun fact, I went to the same high school and college as Brad Paisley, but uh, just there's a lot of history up there for sure. Um, it's, it's really cool and fascinating to check out. Oh, that's fantastic. Great. Well, I know you've gotten uh, all of our attendees excited to learn more about all of your campuses. So thank you so much to all of our experts here today. Uh, and thank you to everyone who joined us, whether you're watching this live or you're catching the recording. We're so glad that you were able to be here. Uh, please do know that when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. And we would really appreciate any feedback that you can provide us about today's event. Please also keep in mind that this is just one uh, of many sessions being hosted. So make sure that you check out to see if there are other events that you would like to attend. And then finally, in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as any other session recordings as well. So once again, thank you to everyone who has joined us this evening. Wishing you all a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.